Aloha class. Here we go. 6.2 integration by substitution part two. Okay, in part two what we do is, is we're going to, instead of doing indefinite integrals, we're going to work on definite integrals. Remember what it means to have a definite integral. To have a definite integral, that means we're going to have a lower limit and a upper limit. So you have kind of these rules right here, class. I would advise you to read through that, but I think it helps out to truly understand what's going on to just keep on doing this stuff. It says we have two methods, and we do, so I will go through both with you, okay? Uh, method one, use substitution to evaluate the integral, but do not, do not change the upper and the lower limits. All right, here we go. So I have uh, the integral of x square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now, when looking at that, um, that looks like u sub. Now, why does it look like u sub? Because I have an inside. It looks like I have to unchain something, okay? Now, how do I unchain that thing? Well, I'm going to decide something to be my u. And my u would be, my first guess would be what's on the inside, right? And the inside here would be 1 minus, whoops, getting ahead of myself, 1 minus x squared. And the reason why that ends up being a good choice for you is because when I take the derivative of that, I get negative 2x. And that x matches up with that x, which ends up being a really good thing. Because when I solve for my dx like we were doing in the previous lesson, we're going to box this guy and we're going to box this one. Now, this is method one. So the interesting thing about method one is when we rewrite this in u sub, I'm going to keep my lower limit in terms of x and my upper limit in terms of x, okay? And let's go ahead and substitute. I'm not going to substitute anything in for that x, so it's going to stay as is. And then I get the square root of u, and then my dx is going to be 1 over uh, negative 2x du. Now, why is that sweet? Those bad boys cross themselves out. I have a negative 1 half, which happens to be a constant. I'm going to rewrite this as u to the 1 half du, and I'm going to keep my limits in terms of x's. And whenever you keep them in terms of x's, you've got to write x equals and x equals. If I wasn't going to write x, like I didn't, like you didn't have to write them here, since this is x, it's assumed that those are x's. So if I don't switch them, it means they're u's, since now I'm writing this in terms of u. Okay, but I'm going to keep them in terms of x's, so let's do that. Now let's find the antiderivative. And the antiderivative, that'd be a power rule. So it'd be you add one and I get three halves, but I have to divide by three halves or multiply by that reciprocal. Okay, right, divide by three halves. Now, am I going to keep a plus C? No way. No way, why not? It's not an indefinite integral. Okay, that means we're having a particular solution. Okay, if it's an indefinite integral, we have that plus C. But if we don't, we're actually going to evaluate it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so there we go. Now, before I actually evaluate it, shame on me. Ooh, I can't erase it. So we should have a little bar in here that says x equals 0, x equals 1, and then let's close that bad boy. Uh, but before I want to evaluate it, let's pull that, pull that 2 thirds out, right? And then they'll cross out, and I'll get a negative 1 third out there. I know the students do a much better job if they simplify first. Now, that's x equals 0, x equals 1. Now, if you notice, those are x's. And that's a u. So before I even do this problem, I have to change it back into my x's. Now, how do I change it back into my x's? Well, what was u? u was 1 minus x squared. 1 minus x squared. And I'm going to evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So I get my 1 third. I'm going to plug a 1 in there, and I'll get uh, 1 minus 1, which is 0. I'm going to plug a 0 in there. Uh, so that's what I get right class when I plug that in. 1 minus 1 gives me 0, minus. What happens if I plug a 0 in there? I get a 1, so I get 1 third, 0 minus 1, negative 1 third. Whoops, some people are saying, Mr. Tanaka, you forgot the negative. I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, negative, negative equals a positive, so it would be positive 1 third. Booyah, there we go. Now that would be method 1. I'm going to come over here, have, make, make sure I have my notes, make sure I did it right. Boom, I got it right, sweet. Holmes. All right, here we go. Example two. Example two would be use, use substitution but change the limits. What the heck does that mean, Mr. Tanaka? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. This one looks tough. It actually looks fun because we love trig, right, class? Um, here we go. Oh, snap. What the heck would be my inside? What would be my outside? Well, it looks like the inside is underneath the radical, so let's give that guy a shot. So let's make u equal 4 plus 3 sine x. 
Okay, let's find the derivative with respect to x, which would be just 3 cosine x. And then I'm going to put my little dx. Now, why is that good? Because the derivative of my inside was in my problem. And remember, that means they're probably going to cancel each other out, which ends up being a super duper good thing. Box the two things we're going to plug in. And let's, here we go. Method two. Right, method two, though. So we're going to go to the integral. And guess what? I'm going to change my limits. I will change my limits. And we're going to go over that in a brief moment. Let me go ahead and substitute some things first. We get that. I get the square root of u because u is 4 plus 3 sine x. And then my dx is 1 over 3 cosine x. Uh, du, sweet, one-third. Hopefully you're saying, Mr. Tanaka, what about your limits, right? Let's handle that right now. I'm going to make that negative one-half du. Now here we go. Uh, I'm going to make it u equal and u equal instead. Well, how the heck does that happen? Well, guess what? That's your u right there. And to get the top one, we're going to go u equals, what would that be? Four plus sine of what was x for that up there? It is pi. What's sine of pi? Sine of pi is 0, so my upper limit is just 4. And guess what? I don't have to write u equals 4. Since these guys have a u in it, and if I just write it 4, then that means u equals 4. All right, let's change my bottom limit. It says to plug in a negative pi, which is 4 plus, oh, snappy dappy. Sine of negative pi is also 0, so my lower limit is 4. Oh, snap, problem's done. Problem's done. Zero. You can't have an area. But I'm going to finish this problem just so, just so it makes sense. Okay, class? But you should have been able to stop it, right? Efficiency. <coughs> Be efficient when you're doing these problems. All right, antiderivative of u. Oh, that's just a power rule. Let's add a 1. That's a 1 half. And let's divide by 1 half. But we don't want to divide by 1 half. Instead, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. Right? So that'd be a 2 right there. And then I'm going to evaluate that. Remember, I don't have to even write it. That's a 4 and a 4. And we're going to find out why it is 0. I should bring that 2 on the outside because it is a constant. And then we get that. And I'm going to go from 4 to 4. So let's do work. Okay? And then let's plug a 4 in there. If I plug that 4 in there, it'd be the square root of 4, which is 2. Let's plug that 4 in there. But I subtract a 2. Oh, snap! I kind of proved that the answer was zero, which we knew from earlier. Because those guys, if they're the same, the area is zero. There's no area to take care of, right? All right. Let's keep. Oh, let me check. Did I get it right? Sweet. All right. Let's keep rolling. Boom. Let's. Oh, example eight. Come on now. Come on now. Challenge yourself. Hit that pause button and take a shot right now. Can you? Oh, snap. This one is tricky. Gee, I already know. All right, here we go. So maybe we should do it together. If you want to hit pause, go ahead and give yourself a challenge. Okay, you'd have to be super, super good to get this one right. Okay. Wow. What do I make my inside? I mean, there's a cosine that could be in. There's a tangent that could be in the inside. And the derivative of a tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? So what? The, what? I think I said... The derivative of tangent is secant squared, and guess what? There's a hidden secant squared in this problem. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. Boom. And then 1 over cosine is secant squared. Oh, I kind of said it when I was working through it, right? So guess what? I'm going to let u equal tangent of theta. Now, why am I going to let u equal that? Because du d theta, right, because this time it's in terms of theta, is going to be equal to secant squared theta. Now, why was that a good idea? Because I have one of those in my problem. It was hidden as 1 over right there, right, class? And then when I solve for d theta, I get 1 over secant squared theta du, which is awesome because that means it's going to cross stuff out. So here we go. If you notice, I didn't have to write anything there. If those guys are thetas, these guys are thetas, right? But I actually really like changing the limits. I think it, it, it saves me a step. So I would encourage you to get used to doing method two. Ni. Dos. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and do this guy. So it, if u is tangent, well, that's tangent to the third. So that's going to be u to the third. I'm not subbing anything in for that secant. But I am going to sub something in for the d theta, which is one. Oh, sweet, sweet chicken pie. Gone, uh, chicken, whatever. All right, but we got u to the third d. Oh, that is so doable. But I better take care of my limits. These are in terms of theta, so let's change it. How do I change it? 
Well, u is going to be equal to tangent of pi over 4. Tangent, oh, sweet. Thanks for helping me out, AP test. It's just 1. This bottom one is u equal tangent of 0. Tangent of 0 would be sine over. Oh, that's just 0. Sweet. Oh, I can handle this, right, class? If, the, if these are, if the, oh, snap. Shame on me. Hopefully you said something. Come on, Mr. Tanaka. If those are U's and these are U's, I don't have to write. So now let's just do work. Uh, that'd be a, a U to the fourth because I have to add one, but then I have to divide by that, which is like a one-fourth, and I'm going to evaluate that from one to zero. I'm going to bring that one-fourth out. Why? Because it makes the math so much more okay. Booyah! So let's plug in the one fundamental theorem of calculus, one to the fourth, right? Minus zero to the fourth, answer one four. If you were able to do that on your own, unreal, amazing, crazy, I got it right. All right, let's keep rolling, class. Algebraic techniques. Oh, now we get into these super fun problems because when I look at this guy right here, you just, it looks impossible. Oh my gosh, if I let u equal x squared minus 1, I get 2x, but there's not there's an x squared on the top. So, oh, sweet. I got a little hint up there. It says long division when the numerator degree is greater than or equal. Oh, and that's totally what I have right here, right? I have where the, the numerator degree is equal to the denominator. So it says use little LD, long division. Okay, so let's do a little long division. Let's see what happens. My guess is it's going to make the problem a little bit easier. Now, how do I do long division? Divide the first, I do my little cycles. Divide the first guy underneath with the first guy outside, and I get ichi. So I put that up there. I multiply x squared plus 1. Most important thing is after that, you have to change your signs, right, because you're going to subtract that. And then I get a negative 2. That means I get a remainder of plus a negative 2 over x squared plus 1. Boom. So what it is is I use long division, and I got a much more doable problem. Why is that more doable? Well, let's see. Indefinite integral, so I better remember that plus 8. Um, but let's go ahead now. I'm going to break this up. That's a difference. So I could break it up into two separate guys right here, right? That 2 is a constant, so I'm going to bring that out. And it's always helpful to simplify, simplify before you attack a problem. Easy peasy Japan easy. Right, that's just x plus c. And this other one is minus 2. Oh, snap. I know what that is. That's inverse tangent, right? Dunzo. Right, that's all that is. That's exactly inverse tangent. Right, class? Plus c. So there we go. Answer done. Booyah, let's roll. And I got to do some long division. Could it get more fun? I don't think so. Or maybe it does expand. Whoa. It says, well, if I let u equal the inside on this guy, sine x plus cosine x, blah, 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 it gets me nowhere, right? Or it actually makes the problem more difficult. So we're going to have some techniques for problems that might look like u sub. But if you use u sub, it actually makes it more complicated. And if it does, maybe long division would help. Maybe expanding would help. So if you notice, these are all techniques that I'm going to do before I actually find an antiderivative. And if I expand that, hopefully we know that I get sine of x plus 2 sine x cosine x, okay, um, plus cosine squared x dx. Oh, snap! And if you're really good and remember to put sine squared, you see that you have a sine squared and cosine squared, which I'm going to simplify even some more. Now, there's a couple ways to handle this guy in the, in the middle, but we'll do it together. So, right, we learned earlier that, hey, I could split this up because it's a sum, right, class? And I get a little, a little booyah, that 2 is a constant, and I get a little sine x, cosine x dx. This first one, easy peasy Japanesey. This one here, well... I could do a little u sub, right, class? Because the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So believe it or not, it doesn't matter what you make your u. Uh, let's go ahead and do my little u sub. I'm going to do it over here. Let's let u equal. I'm going to let u equal sine x. Why? I mean, I'm given an option because the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and then I don't have to deal with a negative sign, right, class? 
I would not have to deal with. So I get booyah and booyah. So my first answer, I'll just keep on carrying down that X and I get a two. Uh, let's rewrite this guy. Uh, I'm going to put a U in for that, that guy. Nothing in for cosine X, but I am going to replace my DX. Oh, so we see you later, alligator. Oh, indefinite integral. I better remember that plus C at the end. So I get plus two. Ooh, I still do the integral. It didn't take an, oh, it's just you for reals. It's just you. Well, that's easy peasy. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, my antiderivative of u to the first one. I would add one, right? And then divide by two, right? So I get two and over two. Uh, I'm going to make simplify. Ooh, well, I'm really done because it's not a definite integral. Ooh, plus C, shame on me. And I get X plus U squared plus C. Oh, there's a major issue. What's the major issue, class? That I better put my U back in and it was sine. So it's sine squared X plus C. Booyah, done. How about it? Not bad. Did I get it right? I show did. And there's actually a couple ways you could have done that one. So pretty interesting. Okay, uh, let's keep rolling, class. Uh, here we go. Oh, I ran into my problem. Okay, now this is probably the, my most fun because I don't know about you, but I love completing the square. Okay, and you may have forgotten that since your pre-calc algebra two days. So let's make sure we take our time on this one. Okay, so once again, why do I have to try something else? If I let u equal the denominator, okay, I get a du, which is 2x minus 6. Oh my gosh, and that just makes it really tough. There's a 2 in there, but who cares, right? I have that x, and so I'm going to create a new x in the problem. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure you try to do u sub right now with what I just did, and you're going to see you're making the problem more complicated. Remember, when we do u sub, we need to create a new integral that has all u's in it, and, it, and hopefully a very doable, okay? Now, this one's pretty tough because it gives me nothing, and it says complete the square when you have x squared and x in the denominator and no x in the numerator. It's exactly what I, it's like, it's like it knew what I needed. All right, here we go. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like constants, so I always bring those bad boys out in front, and it says to complete the square. Okay, <sighs> old school skills, let's check it out. So what do we do? Um, we want this to be a perfect square, and that 10 is messing it up. So we complete the square, which completing the square means you take half of the middle number, the half of that middle number, negative six is negative three, and then you square that, right? If you square negative that, this guy here will always be positive, right? So it's x squared and it's a blank, okay? So it's half of negative six is negative three, you square it, it's a niner, right? But I just can't, in math, you can change the way something looks, but you better not change it. And that's all I'm doing here when I complete the square. So you got a plus 9 there. Oh, I can't just magically get rid of that 10. So we still, we still have a plus 10. But if I add a 9, I have to just subtract a 9. And if I do that, I'm not really changing anything, right, class? If I added all this together, I get this. So that means it's totally legit and legal. Okay, but watch what this does. It allows me to be able to handle this very difficult antiderivative integral problem. Now let's go ahead and finish completing that square, which is 1 over x minus 3 squared, which is, I can do that. I can handle that, right, class? Um, but I also have a plus 1 down here. What the what? Right, because 10 and a negative 9 gives me a 1 dx. And then you are just crazy, ridiculous, awesome, amazing, phenomenal. If you're like, that kind of looks like inverse tangent. And believe it or not, it is. And if you can't see it, then you let your u equal x minus 3. You let your du equal, that's just 1 dx. So that means dx equals du. And let, watch what happens when I turn it to a u sub. Hopefully you'll see it. u squared plus 1 du. Oh, for sure that's inverse trig. So we got 2. That's the inverse tangent of u. And it's a indefinite integral, so plus c, I just better, since I started with x's, I better darn well end with x's. And what was my u? It was x minus 3 plus c. Now the rule here going forward is, if you make your u something and the derivative of it is 1, you shouldn't technically need to use u sub. So what do I mean by that? The derivative of that is x minus, the derivative of x minus 3 is 1. So if I make that u, believe it or not, you should be able to go from there 
to there. We'll talk about that and work on it more in class, okay? All right, here we go. All right, we're approaching 20 minutes here. This video might get a little bit long because of some of the tougher problems, or maybe I'll part, break it up into a day three, a part three. Okay, here we go. Whew. Let's let u equal 1 minus x squared. du equals negative 2x dx. Oh, snap. If I do it, I run into trouble. We'll talk about that trouble in class, but hopefully try to, try to do your little u sub, and you're going to run into trouble. Hopefully you'll see what it is. And so my hint here says, separate the numerator when you have more than one term in the numerator. That's a binomial. I got more, I got more than one term, right? So that means I want to separate. What do they mean separate? Well, this radical keeps all that stuff in the bottom together. So I get the integral of 3x. Let's separate it like it said. Okay, so I get that. Uh, if I'm going to set, that's a plus 2. So plus, okay, okay, okay. All right, there we go. I separate it, and then there's a plus sign. So let's use that rule of integrals, which means I can separate it into too many problems, right? So booyah, there we go. Let's find that antiderivative. And then this guy here, 2 is a constant. I'm going to pull that 2 out. Oh, sweet. I know this dude. That's, that's inverse sine, right, class? That's just inverse sine. Plus e, plus e, right, because it's an indefinite integral. So the only th tough thing here is this first part right here, and I darn it, I put that x here. Well, it was impossible. But that actually, now since there's only one thing up there, I can use u sub, okay? And that means my du equals negative 2x dx. dx is equal to 1 over negative 2x du. Let's use some sub. Right, that 3 is a constant. I'm going to leave that in there for now, though. Let's see where this ends up. Square root of u times negative 1 over 2x du. Oh, sweet. See you later, x. And then I have a 3 and a 2, which are both constants, so I'm going to pull that out. Oh, I've got that negative sign I'm going to pull out. And then I get a u to the negative 1 half, right? Oops, 1 half du. Okay, let's keep on following suit, plus blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I get a negative 3 over 2. Now let's take that antiderivative, power rule, add 1. I get u to the 1 half, but then I have to divide by 1 half. No, wait, because I would rather multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2, right? And then it's a plus c, but a constant, and a constant gives me a constant. And then if I just simplify that bad boy, I get the 2s cancel out. I get negative 3. I can't put u. So let's resubstitute my u back in, which was 1 minus x squared to the 1 half plus 2 inverse sine of x from earlier plus c. Booyah, did I get that one right? That would be crazy. Oh, I did, Holmes, I did. All right, so that is part two, uh, part three. We kind of get crazy. It's like a puzzle, so it gets a lot of fun. But... Aloha. See you in the next video.